know, Jesus said in John 14 and 1, in my Father's house are many mansions. You know, one of the revised versions calls it rooms. Now, I've rented some rooms, Jim, that I didn't like. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, when you talk about a mansion, you're talking about something. Have you ever drove down the road and looked up on the top of a hill and said, well, there, somebody's built a mansion? Yeah, but I'll tell you what, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, and I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come again and receive you into myself that where I am there you may be also. We got people logging on to the service this morning and we appreciate them. Uh, Gene and uh, uh, Wayne White and uh, Charlotte Dean and Lola Bunch, Gloria McBee up in Barbersville, Josh and Eva up in Illinois, Kawan, Illinois, and uh, Angela Payne, just people. I'm just getting everybody interested this morning, getting them logging in. But tell other people about the service. I'm going to preach a sermon this morning that expands our Sunday school lesson, one portion of it. I didn't know that when it, uh, God woke me up with it, but when Brother David started teaching it, he touched on a very important aspect of about our Christian life. So that, that's what I'll be uh, sharing today. But it's good to have you here. It's good to be in God's house. And aren't you glad? that we're able to come out and worship together. So praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord for you. So let's have a good service today, and let the Lord bless, and I know that he will. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we invite you into our service today. We know that without you, we have nothing, and we feel nothing, and we remember nothing about the service. We know it's all about you and your glory and praise and your honor. We thank you for that. We love you, Lord, and we praise you in Jesus' name. And amen. What was we singing that? Page 77, Higher Ground. Higher Ground. I requested this song today. This is one of my favorite, number 77. Uh, see if we can hear you sing from that, back there, okay?
thank our choir. We appreciate it. Appreciate Joyce and Michael playing for us. That's the first time Joyce played with church in a long, long time. So uh, we we did good, I great, thought. Great I mean, uh, we made it. Yeah, yeah. Praise the Lord. Amazing grace. Uh, David talked about that. We're sending it abound. Grace did so much more abound. We're going to do something a little bit different this morning. And uh, uh, we'll do it uh, quickly so it uh, don't. Uh, alarm anyone, okay? But what we want you to do, now this is very simple. We got the back wall, the side walls, the front wall. We want you, if you'd like to join us with a, a prayer this morning to get your family together and pick you a spot back there. And everybody just stand up with us and gather together for prayer. We're not going to hold hands, but we'll just gather together. Uh, families, just pick you out a spot and uh, this up here, I mean, you can come up here. Uh, if you're not afraid, you can come up here behind me. You know, you can come anywhere you want to. I just feel like doing this and having a good prayer. Just pick you a spot, pick you a spot. That's great. I like the way you are doing that. It's wonderful all the way around. Yeah. I'll tell you. You know, there's a, a little sign that says families that pray together, stay together. It's that, that is wonderful. But don't this look good? I've been waiting so long. Now, y'all remember this. Make a mental note of this because we may do it again. Yeah, may. Yeah. So we just praise the Lord for you. And uh, I, 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 there's so much that we missed in our church services lately. And I'll tell you, our church was uh, traditionally a church that formed a circle all the way around this building, and we're going to do that before long again, too. So let's praise the Lord for it. Who's got a prayer request? I know we're online, but uh, I'm going to speak it. If you speak it, I'll speak it over the mic. Uh, Kayla Jackson. Jim Ball. Eddie who? Harris. Leo Campbell. Joanne Miller. Okay. Okay, Wendy Durham. Who else? Okay. Okay. Bo Hinkle. Alta Lake's family buried in uh, Berea this week. Who else? Okay, Jonathan Sauer. Who else? Tim Smith. That's uh, Ethel and Ernest Smith's son up on Caleb's Creek. He's in UT. He had a stroke. And Tim is very, very young, and he had a stroke in UT Hospital. Pray for Tim. Who? Larry Prophet. He's a pastor. That's one of our pastors. Been very, very sick. Who? Okay, Shirley's family. The lost people. We forget about them, don't we? Emily. Okay. Okay, Emily's baby. Bless its heart. Okay. It's been right here in church recently. Yes, sit right back there. I pay attention to that, folks. Uh, y'all need to pay attention to it, too, so when I call it out, y'all know. So remember that. Uh, uh, Joe Walters. Okay. Jim's brother. Okay, 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 Berna for her family, okay, that is good, that makes us feel good, that, that gets us all praying together, remember my nephew Justin, he's Pastor Lincamp, he had surgery this week, who have you got Barb? Our country, most certainly, most certainly. You know, you know. sometimes we push this that way and push that way, but if our country loses, we all lose. We forget that. We'll damage each other back and forth. I've never seen time like that. I'm not talking about one side. I'm talking about both sides. Damage each other, and then our enemies stands back in life status. We damage our own country, and that's not right. 
it's not right. Uh, let's pray together, and let's pray that uh, God will bless Roger. I feel led to do it this way. I want you to come and pray for all these requests. And uh, I, I just I just want us to remember this, but we're so blessed today, aren't we? Thank you all for being here. Roger, you come on. Let's bow our heads. Most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we're thankful, Lord, to be here today. And thank you, Lord, for each one that's come this way. I thank you, Lord, for the one that's watching online this morning. I know, Lord, that there's a lot out there this morning that needs a touch from you, all the requests that's been made here in person, Lord. I ask you, Heavenly Father, to touch each one of them, Lord. I know that with a, with a touch from your hand, Lord, that the sick can be healed, Lord. And I pray, Heavenly Father, for this service today. Pray for each one that's come, Lord. I just ask you to bless each one for being here. Lord, I pray for the brother that stands before us today, Lord. I just ask you to give him what you have us to hear. And Heavenly Father, most of all, I pray for that lost soul this morning, wherever it might be. If there's anybody here, Lord, that's never been saved, I pray, Heavenly Father, that that spirit will come down upon them, Lord, and they'll see the need to be saved today. And I pray, Heavenly Father, for all the ones that's watching out there, Lord. I know there's many that's got to be lost that's listening to us today, and I pray for each one of them, Lord. I ask you now, Lord, to go with us throughout the service. Bless these things that's done. I pray, Lord, that we'll always be found to doing what you'd have us to do, and just letting their light shine. And Ask you once again, Lord, to be with us through the service. Forgive us when we fail you. That's these in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, I'd just like to invite everybody into our service. It's just a worship service. And anybody got a song this morning on their heart? Singers anywhere. We're <laughs> if we get anybody, it looks like I'm going to have to draft somebody for now. <laughs> no singers this morning. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Pray, pray for... <laughs> Pray for, sorry about sorry about the short notice. <laughs> yeah. Pray for Brother Vernon. I, I tell you, I got a break here, didn't I? Uh, I? I was thinking as Roger's opening up, they say yellow cheers everybody up. So, Roger, me and you and Jim's trying to cheer everybody up this morning. It didn't work, okay? It didn't work. But I praise the Lord for you, and uh, uh, we're glad that you're here. Uh, Holly, did you want to sing a song? You can, can't you? Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I promise you I won't kid you about your trips, okay? <laughs> uh, we appreciate them so very much and glad they're back. But we're thankful for being in God's house. Just come sing what's on your heart, okay? I think sometimes that's better, don't you? Y'all pray for them. We got us a duo going here now, okay. Uh, let me go ahead and give the scripture I'm preaching out of while they're coming. I'll be in John chapter 10 and verse number 11. John chapter 10 and verse number 11. You get a twofer. You get a duet. <laughs> She's brave and I'm not. <laughs> I thought number one would surely be me. I thought I could be what I wanted to be. I thought I could build on life's sinking sand. But I can't even walk without you holding my I can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountain's too high and the valley's too wide. Down on my knees is where I learn to stand. Lord, I can't even walk without 
you hold in my hand. I thought I had done a lot on my own. I thought I could make it all alone. I thought of myself as a mighty big man, but I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountain's too high and the valley's too wide. Down on my knees I learned to take a stand. I mixed it up. You're fine. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. The mountain's too high and the valley's too wide. Down on my knees. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I'm going to up on that car. I, I can't never get that. It's a problem I have. I want to tell everybody that when I was laying at home in bed and couldn't get up, I heard her get up and sing a song, and I laid there and cried. It was such a blessing to me, and it's horrible when you, I know a lot of people have been through it, and I'm not no better than nobody else, but I laid there and watched my church, and he blessed my heart, knowing that I had them there for me, and I thank him for all the prayers, and Prayers brought me out. I'm not even supposed to be walking now. They said 10 weeks, and I was up and going at four weeks. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Thank you, girls. We appreciate that. Barb said she wasn't supposed to walk for 10 weeks. She's out at four. I hope your doctor's not watching this. So anyway, uh, that's where they say we're not responsible for any of the content other than our own, all right? But we appreciate that. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. What a true, true, true song. We can't even walk without him. I'm in John chapter uh, 10, and I may start to read him with verse number 7 instead of verse number 10 when you find it. Uh, if you would, just uh, turn... Uh, with me and stand with me in reverence to the reading of the word of God you know uh, the standing for the reading of God's word comes from the book of Nehemiah basically and fundamentally because that uh, they were commanded not requested but commanded to stand at the reading you can't even get people to stand for anything anymore hardly and uh, I'll tell you what there uh, there's things that is uh, that is worth standing for, and I just praise the Lord for that. And um, I want to share this sermon uh, uh, God shared with me uh, this morning, and I just want to share it with you, uh, beginning in verse seven. Uh, then said Jesus and the damn verily, verily, that those words mean of a truth, of a truth, or a validation of the truth. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep now remember that verse I'm the door of the sheep or the sheep fold the sheep fold was a place in Jerusalem where people would come and bring their sheep and and uh, you know and they would stand at the door and call their name I'm the door of the sheep all that ever came did you notice that word to use all that ever came all that ever came David told on that this morning I mean from the foundation of the world all that ever came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. Verse number 9. 
I am the door, but me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, uh, and shall go in and out and find pasture. Verse number 10, the thief cometh not but to steal uh, and to kill and to destroy. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Now here's my text verse in the next two verses. I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd give his life for the sheep. But he that is a harlan and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and he leaveth the sheep and fleeth and the wolf catcheth them and scatters the sheep. The harlan fleeth because he is a harlan and careth not for the sheep. My message title is very simple and it's part of the text. The title of the sermon today is The Good Shepherd. That's what I'm going to preach on. That's what uh, God is leading in. And I just asked him to bless in that. Jim uh, Jones, would you ask God to bless? Thank you, Jim. Uh, there's something very, very interesting about this text verse. Of course, he starts it, and I don't know how many of you scholars are watching the reading this morning, but he uses the I am several times in this. And uh, he keeps uh, talking about I am the door to the sheep or to the sheepfold. Uh, if any man enter in, it'll be there, uh, there by me. But then he goes down and he uh, uh, changes the tone of it a little bit, perhaps somewhat, uh, maybe not altogether. And uh, he changes it and listen to what he said. He said, I am. We know what the I am is. Before Abraham was, I am. I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, he uses the I am a lot, but uh, listen to what he says specifically today. He said, I am the good shepherd. The Good Shepherd. I'm going to be very detailed on this sermon today. And he said, The Good Shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Uh, during our Sunday school lesson, it was mentioned by our uh, teacher this morning, uh, during the Sunday school lesson, it was mentioned how that a rich young ruler came to Christ once and he said, uh, Good Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus asked him in a, a question back in retrospect. He said, Why callest thou me good? For there is none good except the Father which is in heaven. Uh, but you know he's using the emphasis on the word good. Uh, but then he talks about the shepherd. And uh, a shepherd is a leader, is he not? Uh, the shepherd always goes before the sheep. Uh, now, uh, I want to really deepen this a little bit and say this. Uh, the sheep is a very direct reflection of the shepherd that leads them. Uh, now, if a shepherd in the ancient times took his sheep to a, a market and they look behind the shepherd and they're wormy and they've got lice and they've got mites and they've got the mange and everything, uh, you know what they're going to say? Uh, they will not one time say, what kind of sheep are these? Uh, they will look and they'll say, what kind of shepherd is he or she? What kind of shepherd do they have? I want to deepen it another uh, level because uh, not only that, but when he markets them, uh, his return or his dividend is not in what he is, but it's what they are uh, that really counts. You never hear a shepherd leave a market and meet somebody on the dusty road and they look at you and say, well, how much did they give for you today? Uh, it don't work that way. Uh, you know, uh, they'll stop him and say, how much did your sheep bring today? 
Uh, you know, the, uh, what Jesus is bringing out, he's talking about good. Uh, he was mentioned in her Sunday school as well about the temptation of Adam and Eve. Uh, they did not uh, uh, do what they did because it made them famous or uh, made them better people. Uh, the Bible said they looked at the fruit and uh, saw uh, that it was pleasant under the eye or it looked good. I brought two cookies to church this morning and I must sit down on them because uh, I crushed them and they are not a good example anymore but I, I brought them and you know I, I was going to tell you about them uh, they look good uh, they are good to the eye uh, but the thing about it is when it, you eat something you do not go by what it looks like uh, you go by how uh, good it is uh, so does the Bible talk about good? Have you ever thought about that? How uh, does it talk about good? I've got a good friend uh, that is a pastor in Barbersville, and every time I see him, he tells me and Joyce uh, where the good restaurants are at. He told us a while back, said down on 150 at Mount Vernon at the Renfro Valley, uh, there's a great restaurant down there, and away we go. And we go down there, and the next time I see him, he said, they've got a better one at Stanford or as good as that, and away we go. Uh, you know, Jesus is placing the word good uh, right against the word shepherd or leader of the flock. And listen to what he said about it. And we never look at it that way. We talk about good. Well, uh, you know, me and uh, uh, Grant was talking a minute ago about good steaks and good food. And we equate or relate to things like that. Uh, but, you know, all of a sudden our master talks about good. And he talks about a good leader. Uh, the Bible talks about good fruit. Listen to Christ. He said, a good tree brings forth what? A good fruit, did he not? Uh, the apostle Paul said, our, our heart or our conscience should be assured uh, with a good conscience, did he not? I uh, listened to what the preacher read at Alta's funeral before I preached on uh, uh, Thursday in Berea. He read the verse where the great apostle said, I have fought a good fight. You know, we don't stop and think about how many times the Bible mentions good. Oh, we're in a good battle. We're a good fight. We're serving a good master. We have a good church. Oh, but what does the Bible want us to know about the word good? Oh, the Bible says that, uh, that uh, uh, the woman, and in a sermon that I preached out of Proverbs for Miss Aldo's funeral, uh, it said, who can find a virtuous woman? Uh, she looks out and sees a field and she buys it because uh, she perceives that the fruit is good. Uh, you know, good makes us do things. Uh, good makes us notice things. Uh, good things makes us sacrifice. Uh, but what's Jesus trying to tell us? Uh, you know, when we're talking about the shepherd, uh, he said, I am the good shepherd. Uh, you know, have you ever noticed how that Christ uh, never uh, tried to exalt himself? Uh, but he said, my Father, which is in heaven. He elevated the Father as being a good Father, uh, which made us have a confidence in Christ. So how does that affect us? The Bible tells us, and if, we're, if we have any good in us at all, it's Him, and because of Him, the Bible is teaching us here in this sermon I'm preaching that, listen to what He said, uh, we can be stern in our belief, uh, but still be strong in our benevolence toward God. Uh, we don't have to be rational or uh, we don't have to be uh, the way that we are sometimes. Uh, Jesus said the good shepherd, if he have a hundred sheep and one go astray, will he not lead the ninety and nine? Because why? He is the good shepherd. Uh, one is worth it all. 
He gave his life uh, for one uh, because of that. Uh, you know, sometimes we struggle with uh, the word good because we think it's what uh, that we become or what we are. But we're none good without him. What makes us good and what makes us... And you know what confuses us, Brother Jim? Uh, they'll look at us and say, Well, you guys are uh, shepherds or under-shepherds. But do you realize that every person in this house, every person watching uh, that's a child of God is an appointed leader of someone else? You moms and dad leads homes and our grandparents leads grandchildren and uh, we lead each other and uh, God is telling us that we're all of uh, the shepherdry. Uh, we're all part of the kingdom of God. Uh, we don't leave leadership to one, but we, uh, be, uh, we become part of that leadership of God and we do the good work because... Uh, he tells us that he is a good shepherd. Uh, what makes us a good uh, shepherd in life? The first thing has been humble. Uh, the Bible tells us that we will humble ourselves under uh, the mighty hand of God, that he'll lift us up. If we exalt ourselves, we'll be abased. If we humble ourselves, uh, then we'll be exalted. Uh, you know, people don't admire us because it we're strong and stern. It may attract some people, but uh, people that mean well are attracted to leaders that are humble in life and love them. Uh, you know, leadership's not. Uh, you can't drive sheep. Have you, uh, did you hear me? How many of you have ever tried to herd a flock of chickens? They go everywhere. Sheep are not driven. Uh, sheep are led uh, because that they learn to follow uh, your steps and my steps and somebody else's steps. I grew up and my mama always had uh, those big red hens, Jolene, and uh, uh, she had grown them up to friars and brown, and uh, we always look forward to that. But how many of you have ever took a crumb of bread out in the yard and you, uh, I, just one crumb and you throw it out and one chicken will run to get it and uh, if you got 50 more, the other 49 runs behind it just because they know it found something good. Have you ever seen that? A mother hen will go out in the yard and start scratching and start uh, making a clucking sound and all of a sudden every little chick will run to her because they perceive that something is good. You know, think about this for a moment. You know, uh, humbleness is a great trademark of any leader and we're all leaders. Our Sunday school teacher told us this morning that we all lead someone somewhere in some way, somehow. We lead them. I, you know, I was giving out some little things in Sunday school. I went downstairs and I asked the little girls, I said, how many of you have a car? I don't know her name, but one of them back there said, I'll have one in four years. You know, we, uh, our children don't drive and our children do not uh, purchase the wires of this world. Uh, we are leading them and sometimes we forget that we are uh, the leaders of this world as Christians and as born again believers. You know, we, uh, if everything goes wrong in America, we uh, I blame our elected leaders and sometimes they deserve it and sometimes they don't. Most of the time they do, but either side. But anyway, I'm getting off of that. I, but we forget and we'll blame and we'll I talk about our churches and we'll say, well, our church did good and we'll try to blame I'm Michael Mays or Jim Ball or somebody else or I'm not going to even mention me, but we'll blame that when all the time we forget uh, that we're leaders ourselves. How long has it been since we invited somebody to church? How long has it been since we showed the love of God 
Uh, we've let COVID not change us, but let COVID emphasize who we really are as a nation. We have become people that God is not pleased with. Well, you know, COVID has become not only a problem to the world and expense to the world, but it has become a rational excuse in many people's eyes uh, to not be good anymore. Uh, how many of you, and uh, I, I don't know whether you saw this, but this past week, uh, you know, and this is very interesting because this past week, hackers hit a, a pipeline, and, you know, it only took one person to say, uh, there's going to be no more gas. And there was a lady showing me a video of a woman filling up Walmart bags with gasoline carrying them across the parking lot and putting them in the car with her kids and them leaking out, filling up bins and clothes bins and everything, and everybody panics because of that somebody said one thing. Elon Musk mentioned bitcoins this other day, and I had a guy tell me that they skyrocketed because he said something good about them. How long has it been since we have I done something good? I said something good? Or tried to be a little bit better, more like Christ, because of the rich young ruler was not saved according to my a calculation, but he was drawn to the Lord because he heard that he did something good. There was, I got a call this past week and I was working for somebody else and uh, I, when I work now, I wasn't getting paid because I, if I was, I'd quit or get fired, you know, but I, but I got a call and uh, my brother called me and he said, Vernon, I need you. Uh, Gene has never called me and said, I need you. It's Vernon said, Gene, I need you. <laughs> I need you, I need you, I need you, over and over. When he called me, I panicked, and uh, I, he said, I need your help. And uh, uh, some that are here can tell you I jumped in the truck. I called Joyce, and I said, I'm headed to Barbersville. And I was so proud because my older brother needed my help. It made me so proud. He had never asked for my help before. Probably never will again, <laughs> but anyway, we'll, we'll deal with that when we come to it. He called me, and I go to where he said, and he was working on a project, and uh, this nice, humble guy that he's working for, and my brother was helping him for, what was that word, free? <laughs> and he is helping him because he likes him. You know, I'm just using an example. don't know about I get tore up, okay? Listen, he's helping him, and I walked in, and the man that was there, he looked at me, and he said, Vernon, we have been here 10 hours working on this and said we've give up. Had five people on it and they've give up. Please help us. Now I'm just making a point. I'm making a point. So I turn around and I say, what's the problem? They show me and I said, all you need another set of eyes. Here it is and I, 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 I fixed it and everything started working and they thought I was a genius, and I thought he was going to bow down to me for a minute. I said, it wasn't nothing, but to that man, he, said, he looked at me, and he said, I'll never forget what you just did. I said, I never did much. He said, it was to me because, uh, you know, uh, the world is needing people, needing people. I uh, that know that if they're following the good shepherd, that the good shepherd expects us uh, to be leaders that exemplify uh, good things in life. We're not saved because we're good. We're not uh, exalted because we're good. He exalted the Father, and we exalt him. And I said, well, thank God that I could just help you in some way. Not thank some politician or some world leader, but thank God uh, that we're able to do a few things. There's still good people in this world, humble people in this world, to be a great shepherd and leader to others that are lost. We must have humbleness, uh, but we also have to wear a coat of humility. Some people will follow you for a while because 
Uh, you'll say, well, I'm skillful or I'm articulate or I'm tactful or something like that. But eventually only people will follow you when you have humility in your life and when you look out for their good. You know, we're living in a world where, and that was said this morning, where I, that uh, a lot of people, you know, and, uh, and think about this, a lot of people just think about self. But a good shepherd didn't think about himself. He thought about a lost world that didn't know God that was going to hell. And he said, I, I have to do something good. And he gave his life on Calvary for people that were lost. What makes us not good sometimes are lingering issues or uh, outside influences. A lot of times it's just the ignorance of this world that makes us not good. We forget what's good and what's right and who's good and who's right. And we want to be like that. You know, every one of us, and you may not admit it, but you fashion your life after someone, somewhere, somehow. I had the honor and uh, of being brought up but uh, two great preachers. One of them was... Uh, one of the best, uh, hardest preaching men I ever heard in my life. And, and uh, Judy and uh, Miss Doris here will remember him, and I know Joyce does. Some others may not, but his name was Homer. And, and he preached. I mean, uh, I, I, I wasn't even a preacher, and I, I thought, man alive, I want to be like him. I want to be like him one day. And then I had another pastor who's one of the greatest leaders that I ever was led by, and, and his name was John. And uh, he, uh, I, he uh, I told me, he said, in order to lead people, you must love people. You don't drive sheep, you lead sheep. And, uh, and sheep follow shepherds. They do not uh, go out in front of shepherds and survive. But I thought when uh, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd, followers become like leaders, and they're identified by whom or whomever they follow. And leaders are identified by whomever follows them. I'm going to use a name, and when I use the name, I, I just uh, want to know. Don't speak it out, but I want to know what you think. If I say Charles Manson, what do you think? If I say Billy Graham, now what do you think? I, I'm, I mean, I thought this was one of the most awesome things God ever said to me when he said, I'm the good shepherd. I'm the good shepherd. You know, you don't become greater because you bring others down, but you become greater when you lift others up. Have you ever thought about that? You don't drive sheep, you lead them in Luke 2 and 8. The Bible says that there were shepherds uh, uh, abiding in the fields, abiding with their sheep. You know, don't that ring a bell to you when that shepherds stayed out there of a night? Now, that's about the birth of Christ. They stayed out there of a night, and they were abiding with their sheep. Uh, they don't follow you because you're a great leader, but they follow you because they love you. You know, we have forgotten in our churches, a lot of us and a lot of churches have forgotten how important loving people are. How important loving people are. You know, if you love somebody, I was thinking, and some of you may think it's silly, I don't care. I don't care if you laugh. I don't care if you go back to the door after service is over and look at me and say, that's the silliest thing I ever heard you say. But you know, Chloe, when they come over to our house, she brought a little kitten over there and we call it a barn cat because it ain't too loving. I mean, it just ain't. I mean, it, uh, at first, it's wild. You couldn't catch it. You couldn't call it. You, you couldn't, uh, I was uh, trying to think of another word to start to see, but I can't think of nothing. But it just was. And all of a sudden, you know, now you think about this. We started petting it and feeding it. And last night, this is the part you'll think silly. We got a ring doorbell, and it's sitting down on the bottom of the door. The other day, Tom brought some food to the house. I said, I said, Lex, and I said, hey, Tom. Hey. So we got a ring doorbell, and, 
and you can hear what people uh, says through it and they can hear you back ain't that amazing yeah ain't that amazing these kids say no that's technology no that's amazing but last night uh, Jordan had let the garage door down his theory is it'll survive <laughs> you know, but, but he laid it down I always laid it in the night and his sleeps on my lawnmower seat John Deere seat by the way he loves it I told Jordan I said when y'all move you gotta buy me a new John Deere seat because that cat won't go with you without that seat <laughs> it sleeps there last night somebody put a bag of dog food in its seat and I turned the light on this morning and it's sleeping on top of a box and it wasn't happy but he had locked that cat out. I'm almost done. He locked it out. About 11 o'clock, our ring doorbell went off of a night. That's scary. It went off. I thought, who on earth is that? And that cat, now I think that it knew that it was calling me. <laughs> Here we go. But it comes up at doorbell sitting down next floor and it comes right up in that camera, Shirley, and it went, meow. <laughs> I told Joyce, I said, he has locked that cat out again. I go and I raise the door about that high. Now think about love for a minute. About that high. And his name's Melissa. It ain't named after nobody. Don't nobody get an idea. And I said, Melissa, come in. And he had come right in there and he looked up at me and it's like he said, thank you. <laughs> I'm just showing you what love can do. You can kick your dog every time you go in the door. After a while, he'll either bite you. Are you with me? Or it won't be there. It'll either bite you or leave. Am I right? But if you go in, even animals know what love is. That's my point on the kitten now. That's my point. I'll get harassed over that cat for two weeks now. But listen, that's my point about it. Even animals learn to love you. But Jesus is telling us when he said, I'm the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. He is telling us, if everything else can understand God, why do we not understand God? Why are we still on this, uh, this theory? A theory is something that's never been proven. Something never... When I worked at AP, AMP at 19 year old, uh, first of the month, we was in a little store and uh, we sold so much milk, I'd bring milk out on a pallet and people would take it out of the crates and put it in their buggy and I'd never put it in a cooler. I brought it out of the cooler, don't nobody panic, okay? Brought it out. And we had an engineer come in one time and he said, theoretically, you're doing this wrong. I said, theoretically, I may be doing it wrong, but no theories have been proved, so till you prove it, I'm going to do it the same way, okay? <laughs> but let me tell you something that is proven. That is the love of God. And you know, if you want people to follow you, then you need to do something good. Amen. Amen. And I'm preaching to a big congregation out there. You need to do something good. You know, the world is filled with hate and envy and covetousness and greediness. Did you notice when I said greediness, I make that face greediness. That has destroyed a many of a home, many of a family, and a many of a church. But our world is needing people that still remember there's something good. You know, he said, why call us me good? There's none good but the Father which is in the heaven. But you know, Christian people, 
you know when he talked about the good shepherd and we say well we don't have a good church unless you're good no we don't have a good church unless we're all striving to be good and we're all striving a lot of leaders in life have thought they could go it the other way they'll be great for a while but then they'll be brought down they'll be brought down they'll it don't work like that. It don't work like that. You know, if I was in a war, and I'll just conclude the sermon this way, but if I was in a war, and and say, I'll use Tom, he's uh, he's uh, family to me, but if I was in a war and me and Tom was there uh, side by side in foxholes, I'd rather Tom love me and look out for me than I have for him to be the greatest warrior that's ever been born. He can have medals hanging all the way down to his belt line. But if he don't love me, then it means nothing. The Apostle Paul in the love chapter in the Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, said, Without love we become as a tinkling of a cymbal and a sounding of brass. It means there's no distinction. You know the distinction between us and this crazy, mad world that Michael sings about? Michael, would you sing it for the invitation? Get ready, because I'm almost done. Uh, you know what makes a distinction between us and those folks? You know, the Bible says that in the New Testament that the uh, man of old was identified because he went about doing good. You know, when it we... Me and Joyce was going to Berea on Thursday, and we had been to the funeral home two or three times this week, and uh, we was going up there, and we was talking about all this funeral, and I said, God's already given me the scripture. She, what she asked me, she said, does it make you nervous to have preach a funeral? I said, not if God's given me the sermon, it don't. Now, if I go it on my own. And she said, well, it uh, should be easy today because you can't say nothing but good. Now think about that for a minute. Just think about that for a minute. Because of Miss Alta, Joyce would go to give her a perm and do her hair and, and take care of her. And, and Alta would say, have Verna drop you off. And when I go back, she'd have me, she'd have me uh, uh, grilled cheese, potatoes. Am I making you hungry, Michael? And, and she'd always make me one of them custard pies. Now, how could I preach her funeral without saying something good? <laughs> you can't do it. No. You see what I'm saying today? This is one of the rare instances in the Bible that Christ links the word good with the shepherd. Good is an act that we do and, a, and something that identifies us. The shepherd is the leader. And he said, even as the, your shepherd, he said, he said, now he said this, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. You know something? There's a one allegiance that will never break down. If you're good to people, they'll remember it. If you're bad to people, I mean, they'll have to hire pallbearers to come to your funeral. Yeah, but when you're good to people, People will remember it. You may say, why are you preaching this? I don't know, ask yourself. I don't know. You know, uh, if I'm led by God and I preach it, I don't, don't know. But somebody in this house knows. Because the Bible mentions good over and over and over. Think about it for a moment. You say, well, the preacher is supposed to bring people to church. no. The people, everybody, were all leaders. The preacher should do this and preacher that. It's so, we're living in a society, it's so easy to blame other people. And guess what? It becomes habitual. It's her fault, it's his fault, it's their fault, their fault. No, it's all of our fault. It's all of our fault. If we've ever, I'm going to take a moment on this because I, I really feel impressed to do this. If we've ever lived in a time 
when people need to be doing something good. It's right now. I mean, I'll tell you what, uh, and this may sound humorous, but I don't mean it that way, but if it goes that way, it's okay. But if, the, if our world would start doing good things, you better carry some of that ammonia smelling sauce with you because somebody's going to pass out. When you say, I'm mowing your yard, they're going to say, they're going to say, how much, how much I owe you? You don't owe me a thing. I mean, you better have some smelling sauce. Or I'm going to do something good. Uh, you know what people say to us now? Or we're going to get another stimulus. <laughs> I ain't going to say. <laughs> or no, I ain't going to say that. <laughs> I'll tell you what. What needs to be stimulating to us is the Word of God, the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. That's what needs to be. Don't some of you clap now to break your arm, okay? That'd be something good. All right. But that's what we need is some excitement from God and people doing good. People doing good. I brag on Wanda's pies, and I'm going to confess something, Wanda. Sometimes I'll brag on them so she'll make me one. <laughs> that's so embarrassing to admit that, but they're good. No, Wanda said, no, it's not. But, uh, yeah, don't it make you feel good when you hear something good? When you hear about somebody doing something good? When somebody does something good for you? Amen. Makes you feel good. And you know who it reminds you of? Jesus. Amen. Michael, you ready? That's a message. The Good Shepherd. I'm a traveler Far from home I get along But I press on Cause there's a mansion Streets of gold Where I belong There's a day coming soon where the old will be made new and heaven's glory shines like the morning before our eyes. When we all see Jesus, well, when we all see Jesus, well, no more sickness, no more madness, well, no more pain. When we all Jesus face to face then we will sing with angel voices there will be a great rejoicing well holy holy Worthy, worthy is the Lamb. When we all see Jesus, yes, when we all see Jesus, well, no more sickness. No more madness, well, no more pain. When we 
when we all home see Jesus face to face. When we all home see Jesus face to face. Thank you, Michael. Uh, you know, the Bible tells us in closing that sermon out, recompense no man evil for evil, but do good for those who despitefully use you. Pray for your enemies and pray for those that, that uh, hate you and you'll heap coals of fire on their head. Always be on the good side. And when you leave this world, we can say they have fought the good fight. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm going to say something about the sermon before we go off Facebook Live. I, I noticed that uh, several people from uh, different areas uh, logged in right now. Uh, Liz from up in, uh, she lives inside of the ark up there at uh, Williamstown. Uh, that's my cousin. She's watching. But we appreciate it. People from Illinois, I'm seeing, Chicago I'm seeing right there, and different ones that we know that's uh, logged in right now. But we appreciate them. Uh, Christine uh, Fields is asking for prayer for her granddaughter and Christine we see that and we'll be praying for her but we thank you uh, for uh, joining us today and uh, we just uh, thank the Lord for you. Jason will take us off up there and I need to make one final announcement uh, with our church and uh, then I'll let you go.